quadrant bearings, true bearings, false bearings. Okay, that last one's not the real thing. If you are looking for a simple explanation of true bearings and quadrant bearings, you were in the right place because I'm about to set you on a bearing toward knowledge. All right, so I wanna start off first by talking about true bearings. And we'll start by just looking at what a true bearing looks like numerically, and then I'll show you how to draw a true bearing on a grid. Okay, so true bearings look kind of just like an angle. They have a numerical component and they also have a degree symbol. Without context, you would look at this and you would just read that as 120 degrees. And we can still do that here, but we wanna take that 120 degree angle and we wanna think about that as a true bearing. Now, the key characteristic of a true bearing is that it describes a direction with respect to the northern axis. So if you take a look at the grid I've drawn here, I've got my north axis, and what I wanna do is I wanna draw a vector at an angle of 120 degrees with respect to that northern axis. And in order to do that, I'm going to rotate clockwise around my axis. And in this case, I'm gonna do that by 120 degrees. Now, I'm not gonna get fancy and use a protractor or anything, but what I wanna do is show you how you can approximately know where that angle is going to lie without using any fancy measuring tools. So if we think about north as zero degrees, remember that's where we're starting, so that should be zero degrees. We're starting on the northern axis. Since my axis intersect at 90 degree angles, I know that the eastern axis should be 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna label that. If I go through another 90 degrees, I should be down here at 180 degrees on the southern axis. And if I add another 90 degrees, I should be at 270 degrees. And remember, we know that if we go all the way around a full circle, that's 360 degrees. And that'll be important once we get into a few of our examples. So if I wanted to draw 120 degrees without using a protractor, what I could do is start at the northern axis of zero degrees, and I'm gonna go past 90 degrees because 120 is bigger than 90 degrees, but it's also less than 180 degrees. Specifically, it's about 30 degrees more than 90, so it's not quite halfway through 90 and 180. So I could draw it somewhere about here. Now what this diagram is representing is a vector drawn at a true bearing of 120 degrees, which you'll remember is drawn with respect to the northern axis. So this angle right here should be 120 degrees. Now I wanna take a look at one more example quickly because there is something kind of weird that happens with the numerical representation of true bearings. If you're ever dealing with a true bearing that's less than 100 degrees, you won't have a one in the hundreds place. And the way that we represent that with true bearings is we put a placeholder of a zero there. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to look at uh, a true bearing of 30 degrees. That is how you would represent a true bearing of 30 degrees numerically. Now, if we wanted to draw that true bearing, all we do is start at zero and we rotate through an angle of 30 degrees, which we know is gonna be about here. And you'll remember that vectors, we always draw an arrow in the direction of the motion. And this angle right here should be 30 degrees. So this is true bearings, both numerically and geometrically. Now, quadrant bearings are similar to true bearings, but instead of drawing our vectors with respect to the northern axis, we draw them with respect to whatever directions we happen to be given. So for example, the quadrant bearing north 35 degrees east tells us that we're gonna start in the direction of north, but we're gonna travel 35 degrees in the direction of east. So in this case, I'm gonna start on the northern axis and I'm going to rotate 35 degrees in the eastward direction. And remember, we're going clockwise around our axis, right? So that vector is gonna look something like this. That'll be a 35 degree angle and that would be north 35 degrees east. Now, one important thing to note with quadrant bearings is that you'll always see the first letter as either north or south. So while this missing angle right here is 55 degrees, we would never start on the east axis and say we're going to go east 55 degrees north, right? So east 55 degrees north is not something you should be writing when you're using quadrant bearings. Let's take a look at another example that starts with south instead of north. So let's say we're working with, for example, south 65 degrees west. This quadrant bearing tells me to start on the southern axis, which is down here, and I'm gonna travel 65 degrees toward the western axis. Remember, you're always rotating clockwise. So I can start on that southern axis and I can rotate 65 degrees toward the western axis, and I can draw my vector just like this, where the angle between the southern axis and my vector, in this case, is 65 degrees. 
All right, so we've learned what true bearings and quadrant bearings are. Let's now take a look at how to convert between these two forms. So let's say you're given a true bearing of 300 degrees and we want to convert that into quadrant bearing form. First of all, I know that this is a true bearing because I don't see any north, east, south, west directions. Now, regardless of the form you're converting from or to, it always helps to start by drawing a diagram. Remember that with true bearings, we always start on the northern axis and we rotate clockwise along our axis. And each one of these quadrants is going to be 90 degrees. So if I wanted to draw a true bearing of 300 degrees, I would start on the northern axis, I would rotate past 90, past 180, past 270, and I'm gonna be up in this quadrant up here. If I draw a quick sketch of this true bearing, you'll see that it looks something like this. Now, in order to convert from true bearing to quadrant bearing form, I need to think about whether this vector is closer to the north axis or the south axis, because remember, we always give our directions with quadrant bearings with respect to the northern or the southern axis. In this case, this vector is very close to the northern axis. So if I imagine starting at the northern axis and heading in this direction, we know that that direction is west. So I should be able to communicate this vector in quadrant bearing form using north some measurement west. In order to figure out how many degrees toward the west direction we need to rotate through, we can remember that a full circle contains 360 degrees. So if I were to start on the northern axis and rotate 360 degrees right back to the top and compare that to the vector that I've drawn, I can see that there's a little wedge missing here of 60 degrees. And that 60 degrees is going to be the angle that we place in between our north and our west directions. So we can say that a true bearing of 300 degrees converts into a quadrant bearing of north 60 degrees west. In this last example, let's take a look at converting from quadrant bearing form to true bearing form. Remember that quadrant bearings always give us the starting direction, they tell us an angle through which we need to rotate, and they tell us toward which direction. So in this case, we're going to start on the southern axis, we're going to rotate through an angle of 30 degrees in the west direction. Drawing a quick sketch of this vector would look something like this. We can see that we started at the southern axis, we rotated 30 degrees toward the western axis, and we've got our quadrant bearing vector. But we want to convert from quadrant bearing form to true bearing form. And in order to do that, all we need to do is remember that true bearings always start and give directions with respect to the northern axis. So we ask ourselves, if we started at the northern axis and we rotated through some angle to get to this vector, what would that angle be? And here's where it's really helpful to remember that each of these axes make up 90 degrees. If we start at zero, we rotate through 90 degrees to get to this axis. We rotate through another 90 degrees to get to 180 degrees here. And our vector is very close to this 180 degree southern axis, except it's an additional 30 degrees in the western direction. So to write this vector as a true bearing, all we need to do is take this 30 degrees and add it to our 180 degrees that we've already rotated through. 180 plus 30 is 210 degrees. So we would say that the true bearing form of this vector is 210 degrees. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video on true bearings and quadrant bearings. If you like this video, why not set yourself on a bearing toward one of these videos? I made that joke already.